tell you that I love you 100 times a day You'll get tired of my voice That's how much I'm gonna tell you that I'll miss you I'll miss you if you go Hey Sightseers, Sightseeing Stanley here and Marty. And today we are checking out Marfa, I think. <laughs> yes, we're back in Marfa for the third time. We changed our outfits because we had to come back. And you might be wondering, what? That's because coming out to film Marfa, we expected to find a ghost town. And instead, we found something entirely different. And I have to say that this video, you're gonna have to be prepared. If it seems like we're all over the board, that's because our experience here in Marfa has been kind of like that. Strange. Strange. <gasps> what a strange trip it's been. And so Marfa has become kind of like my nemesis. And so I am determined to get this thing filmed, even if it does take three times the charm. Welcome to Marfa, a former water stop and freight headquarters of the Galveston, Harrisburg, and San Antonio Railway. Established in 1883, this Texas town has a reputation unlike anything else we've experienced in this state, steeped in mystery and intrigue. Now, my first impressions of Marfa is that it kind of reminds me of a town we've been in before called Bombay Beach. You know, because of the different art installations here. I don't remember Bombay Beach. Oh boy. But there is a major difference between here and Bombay Beach, which we'll get into a little bit later in the video. And if you want to check out the video on Bombay Beach, just look in the description below. We'll leave a link. Yeah. And we ask that you watch it after this video is done because if you cut over from this video to that video, it's not going to look too good for the algorithm. Across the street, you can see Marty checking out some of the old buildings here on El Paso Street. Think rain. It's kind of weird. We came here expecting to find a ghost town, and this is probably as close to a ghost town as what we're going to find here. Because the rest of Marfa seems pretty happening. For example, you have this section of old Marfa, which is in the process of being renovated. And then there's the residential neighborhoods that look to be lived in. By the way, Marty's got a thing for this car. Moving along, you can see the building that used to house the West Texas Utilities Company. Now it houses the Pronghorn Gallery, which looks to be like some sort of gift and art boutique. And my personal favorite, Community Marfa open every day 11 to 5 and dogs are welcome and then on the corner next to the old west texas utilities company building is this building i don't think it's too difficult to figure out what this building was originally built for first off we've got this sign here and then if we look above we can see this but let's put marty to the test and see if he can figure it out well, Marty, what do you think this building used to be? Well, between the top of the building, the corner of the building, and the door behind me, I'm sure this is old Masonic Lodge, it still is. Looks like Marty's on the ball today. Yeah, because if we look at the door, we can see, even though it's faded, a rather familiar sign, and then the fact that there were stated meetings, depending on which Thursday of the month it was, determined the type of meeting it was. Kind of wonder if those meetings still happen here or if that's a thing of the past. Be interesting to find out. If you happen to be from Marfa and you know, leave it in the comments section below. For a ghost town, there's quite a bit of traffic and a lot of cars parked down here in this commercial district. 
I get that it's the weekend and that there are going to be a lot more tourists in town, but still, if this was really a ghost town, would you really see all this activity? A few places I want to point out here in the commercial district that I thought were worth checking out in front of me is the Bright Building, built in 1831, which at one time housed the Marfa National Bank. Interesting that you see the name Clarence Judd. I wonder if that's any relation to Donald Judd which is a name that is associated with Marfa, and we'll get into his role a little bit later in the video. Now, something you'll notice as we're walking around town, well, actually, two things you'll notice is, one, we changed our outfits because we had to come back. We got rained out the first time. But two, and most importantly, is that there are really two sides to Marfa, two faces, if you will. And so as we walk around town, I'll show you the two opposing views of Marfa. Check this out. You think somebody painted it up this way, Marty? No, I don't think so. You can see that's years of the sun beating on it and cracking. What do you think it was an advertising vehicle at some point mm -hmm. or what? Sometime and then it says Astro re Commercial Recycling. Well, look, it has a bottle mm. opener there. Yeah. Well, this is my favorite part, is checking out all these old signs. Yeah, Marty likes old signs. He likes a lot of old, eclectic things. He's a collector of sorts. Junk collector. <laughs> One man's junk is another man's treasure. Well, we're coming up on another sign that he really thought was cool. This sign kind of reminds me of one that we've seen already in California. I think it was in Borrego Springs that I saw one similar. What do you think, Marty? Are you going to drag that home? I'd love to have that bolted to the wall and restore half of it and light it up. How hard would that be for you to fix up? I don't know, three pieces of neon and put some sign in it. Make something up and be pretty cool, I think. Neat stuff. Just outside of Marfa, you'll find this cool old sign. You can tell that this has been redone. If you look carefully, instead of motel, it says Marfa on here. Yeah, it's definitely eye-catching, even in the daylight. You can see all the wiring and everything has been redone. They must use this yet, because there's power right there. And if I know Marty, he spotted that phone sign up above. Yep. Too bad we're not passing through at night. It'd be cool to see it all lit up. Getting back to Marfa and its reputation for supposedly being the creepiest abandoned ghost town in Texas. Tell me, would a ghost town have a Dairy Queen? <laughs> Three gas stations. And, and a fancy hotel that would be fit right in in Beverly Hills. Yeah. Not entirely convinced, we set out to find further proof that this isn't a ghost town. I think it's clear by now that Marfa is not a ghost town. If we're calling Marfa a ghost town, then the town I grew up in and just about every other small town out there in America that is trying to make a go, trying to survive the economy, will be called a ghost town. Just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. By the way, if you're wondering why on earth we possibly thought Marfa was a ghost town when clearly it is not. Uh, it's because back in, I think it was October of 2021, the website Only In Your State, you know, that site that does it, breaks it down by state and writes these short, less than two minute read articles for the web, classified Marfa as a ghost town. I, I'm calling BS on whoever wrote that article for Only In Your State. Well, that's just me. Maybe we should ask the real expert here, Marty, who seems to know everything, and see what his opinion is. 
What do you think, Marty? After everything we've seen here in Marfa, would you still call this a ghost town? I don't know if I'd call it an actual ghost town. I wouldn't call this a ghost town. It does lack people, but everything there they have for houses around here, it seems like half of them are bought up and used for Airbnbs. And if you're into the artsy gallery thing, I mean, this town seems to be booming with tourism, so I don't know how it's called a ghost town. Marty brings up a very good point, which actually is the perfect segue into the next part of the video. Remember in the beginning where I said there were two sides to Marfa that I wanted to show you? Well, we're gonna get into that now, and it revolves around the housing and the Airbnb and the art crowd here in Marfa. If you look out there, you can see what's left of Fort D.A. Russell, an old military base here in Marfa. It was purchased some time ago by the artist known as Donald Judd and is now the site of the Chinati Foundation, which, from what I understand from reading on them, they basically took over. I'm not sure when Donald Judd died if the Chinati Foundation was started before or after his death. I just know that they continue on with showcasing his work and other artists. It's a museum of modern contemporary art from what I gather. And depending on your point of view, Donald Judd and the artists that followed him, who've basically done a lot to revitalize the community here in Marfa, have been looked at by some as perhaps creating division of sorts between the haves and the have-nots. Because if you recall, I had mentioned that there are two sides to Marfa, and really if we look around Marfa, you can see that there are areas where Marfa's being revitalized, there's new construction, these tiny homes, the Airbnbs, and then there's also the other part of Marfa where it's falling into decay, disrepair, perhaps what sparked the article by Only in Your State and calling Marfa a ghost town. Um, but the artists are what draw the money here, the people coming from, you know, New York, California, etc., to come and stay, uh, work on art. Uh, to pump money into the community and so it has again from some people's point of view like some of the locals uh, created a division and I guess from my point of view out of everything we've seen in some of the small towns across America this makes Morpha rather unique because unlike in Bombay Beach where the artists have come and created art out of the decay here in Marfa it appears that the artists are actually bringing money into the community. This here in front of me, I believe, is also part of the Chinati Foundation, and it just highlights the reach and the influence that Donald Judd and the foundation has had on Marfa. According to one source, after Donald Judd arrived here, he bought up a good portion of the town, supposedly using his money to influence town decisions in his favor which then apparently created a division within the town. Speaking of divisions, you'll notice on this building the old faded signs referencing Adobe. What that's about happens to be somewhat political and a hot topic here in Marfa. From what I understand from talking with one of the locals, what happened is that they changed the laws so that anybody that owns an adobe structure, whether you live in an adobe home or you just own the adobe structure, you have to pay a higher tax because it's adobe. Which then puts a higher financial burden on those who have lived traditionally in adobe structures. And from the perspective of the local that we talked to, it just adds to the division that's already been created here in Marfa. Take it with a grain of salt, it is one person's perspective. However, it puts an interesting spin on an already strange experience that we've been having here in Marfa. Switching gears a bit, here's the hotel that Marty was referring to that looks like it's right out of Beverly Hills, the Hotel Paisano. On the National Register of Historic Places, El Paisano Hotel 
was considered to be the finest hotel between El Paso and San Antonio. Named for the nearby Paisano Mountain Pass, this hotel was completed in 1930. But that's not the only fascinating piece of history about this hotel. Would you believe at one time Rock Hudson, Elizabeth Taylor, and James Dean stayed here? That's right, you can get a room here staying in one of the rooms that James Dean, Rock Hudson, or Elizabeth Taylor stayed in. And the reason that they were staying here in this hotel is because they were filming a movie just outside of Marfa called Giant. Now, personally, I have never seen the movie Giant. I had read online by someone that had done a review on it saying it was really long, uh, close to maybe three hours, maybe like two and a half hours, and they had a hard time watching it, probably because they're not used to the type of cinema that was prevalent back then, the more of the long, drawn-out dramatization of the story. And so, you know, I'm not going to comment on that. Like I said, haven't seen it. But what's cool is if you come inside the hotel, you can see that they have it set up to commemorate the actors that once stayed here. Now, something I learned that I didn't know prior until I started researching the movie a little bit is that James Dean died in that fiery car crash just before production of the movie completed. He himself had finished his role. All he had to do yet was reread a scene in which he had been mumbling. But I guess Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson still had some scenes to complete. And so it was a huge deal. It really impacted them. Uh, really, Elizabeth Taylor was broken up immensely by the news of James Dean's passing. So quite a historic event in the world of Hollywood. If you drive outside of Marfa, a few miles down the road, actually, I believe it's on the property where filming for the movie Giant took place, you'll find an artist's rendition commemorating the movie, which is really cool. So definitely worth checking out as part of your Marfa experience. And then over here we have the Palace Theater previously known as the Marfa Opera House. Built sometime in the early 1900s, the Marfa Opera House cost $4,560. Yeah, right, we can't even get our truck fixed for that. Then behind the old Marfa Opera House is the Central Fire Station. Built in 1938, it's still in use today. Off in the distance, you can see Marty checking out what looks like a metal cage. I've seen about 340 since we've been traveling over the years. But this is the first one I've seen with actual like cots built into it that fold up or down for the inmates. So is this like a temporary or traveling jail or what? It must be. It must belong to the county. Interesting. Oddly enough, of all the ones that I did see of these, I never noticed this. This one has a tag on it. I always thought they were built by like a local blacksmith or machining company of some sort, but check this out. Manufactured by the Pauley Jail Building Company, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> I wonder if that's like Jailbirds Are Us. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> now this building caught our eye. Initially we thought it might be the old jail, but on second look, we can see that it says Presidio County Archives. It is built just like a fortress. It looks like one, at least like the ones you see in the movies. I wonder what kind of archives they're keeping in there that they gotta have bars on the doors and windows. The map to the lost Dutchman mine, probably. <laughs> Mystery solved. It was a jail. Marty went inside and asked. At least next door he went in and asked. We came here expecting to find creepy abandoned Marfa and instead fell into some other mysterious stuff here, which, okay, I'll give you that. There was something mysterious about Marfa but definitely not ghostly. 
are maybe not that kind of ghosts. Mm -hmm. If you thought you've heard of Marfa before and you're not a movie buff and you didn't read the story in Only in Your State about Marfa being a ghost town, this might be how you've heard of Marfa. And by this, I mean the Marfa Light story, or better known as the Marfa Mystery Light story. This has been a subject of contemplation and wonder since the 1880s. For those of you who don't know the story behind the Marfa Mystery Lights, apparently if you look over in the distance towards the Chinati mountain range, at night you can see different colored lights along the horizon. Apparently these lights just appear at random and they're different colors and they're usually in like circular shapes. They've been described as being like orbs and nobody can seem to figure out what causes them. There's been speculation that they're UFOs. Other people say that they are the luminous remains of lost souls stirring in the desert sky. Still others claim it's a mirage created by headlights of passing cars. What do you think, Marty? Do you think there's any truth behind the mystery lights here in Marfa? Well, from what I read, they first documented in the 1880s, which they claim it was before that it was happening, but since the 1880s, they've been seeing these lights that's documented, so that's before cars and everything else, aircraft, so you tell me. From what I was reading on it, some people were trying to say it was some sort of miraculous type of mirage. Uh, due to maybe the atmospheric conditions out here, which there's something about the conditions that really remind me of the Salton Sea. Over in Salton City, you have the people that like to fly those uh, aircraft. They're what? What Ultra are the Ultralights, parasails, I think, or paramotors. So yeah, paramotors because of the conditions there. And from what I understand, they have similar conditions here. So I don't know, is there something special about the atmosphere here that generates these lights at night? It's strange because in the Salton City area in California, by the Salton Sea, they're at like zero sea level or 50 below sea level. Here we're at 4,500 feet. Yeah, so it's just kind of interesting. It's way different. But the other thing too is when we were out in the Salton Sea, Marty, believe it or not, saw some really weird green lights one night over there. So I don't know. Stone sober. Yeah, he was. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, but he was. <laughs> Another noteworthy thing on the Marfa Lights is where this building is where you view, a military base is built here. You can see it or at least was built here, you can see it on Google Maps. Did they build that base here because of the lights? Because there's runways here. So they had aircraft here. Well, the strange thing is there's a lot of speculation. There's no doubt that they're here, but what are they? Unable to solve the mystery of the lights, we move on to this next Marfa enigma. You wouldn't guess where we're at. No, you probably won't, unless you recognize this fence. And before I reveal to you where we are, I just wanted to show you the view. It is just spectacular. I never realized how beautiful it was down here until we got here. What do you think? Should we reveal where we're at or do you want to show a few more of the interesting locks and things that have been left behind? No, you can reveal. Yeah, we couldn't come all the way to Marfa and not check out the Prada store out in the middle of nowhere. And either Marty is trying to connive up a way to get inside, or he's really intrigued by women's fashion. I don't know, I could see him maybe sporting one of those pink purses. I better watch it, otherwise he's gonna get me back good later. You damn right. By the way, to all of you who think Marty needs to smile more on camera, there's a reason he doesn't. And that's because if he did, I'd have to be beating off all the ladies all the time. And so we have an agreement that he's got to be the crabby one and I'm the bubbly happy one. Right, Marty? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> 